Hey guys, Victor here again, coming at you with another retro deck profile for the September 2011 format. And today's focus is going to be on Piper Quick Draw, which is pretty similar to Piper Chaos, but it pretty much revolves around Quick Draw Synchron and getting to cards like Drill Warrior uh, pretty consistently. The only difference is that I feel like the power level for this deck is honestly like a little bit worse compared to Piper Chaos, but it's still a lot of fun to play. And with that out of the way, let's just jump straight into the deck profile. So we're going to kick off the monster lineup with three quick draw synchrons. This is one of the two most important cards of this deck because it pretty much gives you access to your Drill Warrior, which is going to be one of your main, you know, like go-to plays. Just because Drill Warrior is super important in being able to get back your resources and just having like a really, really strong grind game. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely feel like three of this card is the way to go. But I know sometimes with some decks, uh, they prefer just playing two quick draw synchrons, but I don't know. For me, personally, I think 3 is better. And like, sure, sometimes it's a brick, but it's not the end of the world. Then after that, we're going to be playing 3 Mystic Pipers, another fantastic card, because what it does is you tribute it, draw a card, reveal it, and then if it's level 1, which we play a lot of, you get to draw an additional card. Uh, this is going to be one of your main cards, and pretty much one of your only normal summons that you're going to care about in order to help get you into key combo pieces that will in turn help you beat your opponent. And then to complement the Mystic Pipers, we're going to be playing one Kinkabayo. I know a lot of people tell you two to three, but I really don't feel like it's that necessary. Just because the one gets the job done, if it gets Veilard, oh well, it's not the end of the world. Uh, it's already done its job by beating out one of the most powerful hand traps in the format, which means that your other plays are going to be a lot more successful. And we still play three, three Pipers too, so even if this does get stopped, we're still going to have additional Pipers to you know actually be able to combo off. And then once we get into like the mid to late game too, Mystic Piper is honestly not as effective because you've already had all your resources. So yeah, uh, one Kinkabayo is perfectly fine. Then we're going to play three Tour Guide from the Underworld. Just another fantastic card. Level three, dark, brings out your Sangans, helps you get into your rank three place so you can get your Levieres because let's be honest, uh, if you're playing all these lights and darks, you're going to be playing BLS and just a bunch of other cards that continuously banish your monsters, such as Dimensional Prison, Bottomless Trap Hole, Caius are played pretty frequently in this format. So yeah, no reason not to play it. It's just a really good engine. And this is going to be the only other really uh, actual normal summon that we have in this deck, just because you typically either want to have your Piper every single turn to try and gather your resources, or if you're going to try to push for game, uh, you definitely go for Tour Guide. Then after that, we're going to be playing three Volcanic Shell. So this card is pretty cool just because it's able to replace itself once per turn when it's in the graveyard. And you pair it with like Quick Draw, for example. So if your hand is like fairly weak, but you open Volcanic Shell plus Quick Draw, that's fantastic because that means you have instant access to Drill Warrior because you special Quick Draw by discarding this and then Shell gives you another Shell. You just normal summon it and you make Drill Warrior and the grind begins. After that, we're going to be playing two level leaders. Uh, not much to say. This card is insane, but it wouldn't really be broken until later on in the game's history. But for now, it's still just a really good continuous recursion monster uh, because it's just constantly able to get back because we set up so many monsters that are level 5 or higher fairly easily. And whether you want to use it like offensively for like really like, a not a generic, but like really absurd synchro plays. Or even if you want to use it like defensively, right? Say you have Drill Warrior plus like two level leaders in the grave. You level eat, bring out both in defense position, wall up, and then you banish Drill Warrior and then just repeat the process next turn. So yeah, card's really good. <clears throat> then after that, we're going to be playing three Effect Veiler. Since we're playing Mystic Piper, we want to have a lot of level ones. And Effect Veiler is pretty much like the staple and most important level one outside of Piper that we can play. Just because it's able to stop so many key monsters such as like Opposing Tour Guides, TG Hyper Librarian, Formula Synchron, Caius, you name it. And yeah, just a very good card. Then after that, we're playing the two Max C's because it's Max C. And we're also going to be playing two Battle Faders. Also another fantastic card that really gets to shine in Mystic Piper. Because a lot of the time, you're not going to have any monsters on the field. So Battle Fader is going to be live a lot more often than not. And then if you do draw this off Piper, like I said, you get to draw an additional card. So yeah, just really, really solid. After that, we're only going to be playing one Trigodia just because uh, the space is really tight. But And you honestly don't even really need more than just the one. It gets the job done. And for the same reason, we're playing the one Gores because it's Gores. And then after that, we're playing a small plant engine. Play the one Spore, which also happens to be level one. So if you draw it, fantastic. Uh, 
and then you're going to have the one dandelion, which gives you two free tokens, and you can just continuously loop this plus Drill Warrior and just continue to get more tokens and, you know, wall up in case your hands are, like, pretty weak. And one Glow Bulb. You know, just another very important level one monster. It can bring itself back from the grave and then give you additional synchro plays. And then for the final monster, one Black Luster Soldier on Boy the Beginning. We play Lights, we play Darks. No reason not to include him. And with that, that's the monster lineup. And now we can finally move on to the Spell and Trap portion of the deck. So the Spell and Trap lineup is pretty small, but like every single card is super important and like can just change the game into your favorable outcome pretty easily. So we're going to start off with the one Dark Hole, the one Monster Reborn, and the one Heavy Storm. You know, the Trinity, Staples, Broken, <laughs> uh, can just completely turn the game on its head if drawn and played correctly. And then after that, playing one Mystical Space Typhoon. Uh, I'm going to be honest, this deck struggles really hard against back row. So if you're playing it's like a TG stun player or something, uh, make sure you're actually citing more copies of this and just generic cards because if you get like a skill drain flipped on you, the game's over, like straight up. Especially if you don't draw the out. And then after that, I'm playing the one Foolish Burial. A lot of our cards activate in the graveyard, like the plant monsters, whether it's Bulb or Dandy. And then there are a lot of times too where you open up like the Kink of Bio, but you have nothing to do, right? So you can just Foolish the Piper, you know, normal summon Kink of Bio, bring back the Piper, and then just start your engine that way. So yeah, it has a lot of really cool utility. Then you have one for one, which, you know, Mystic Piper is a level one. You can special summon it from the deck while filling up your graver with very important key cards, whether it's Volcanic Shell, Dandelion, things of that nature. Uh, and then we're also playing Mind Control. This one's probably not as strong in this specific deck, but we still play a lot of tuners. So being able to have the option to take an opponent's monster and then synchro with it, it's still really good. Um, we're playing one Allure of Darkness just because it's a we play a lot of darks and being able to draw two banish one isn't the end of the world and it also pairs really well with your tour guides for example because you banish a key dark monster whether it's like level leader or whatever then you go tour guide level leader, bring it back and then it's like it was never gone uh we're also playing one pot of avarice because even though this does have like chaos elements you fill up the grave extremely easy thanks to cards like quick draw synchron and your volcanic shells so just being able to shuffle those cards back and then draw two is huge and then for the final spell, just one tuning. Uh, even though this card is really good, the deck is already pretty consistent, so you honestly don't need more than one. And I've never really been a fan of like the random mill because a lot of the times, like me personally, uh, I'm just not good at this game. So that means I'm always going to be milling like a spell or a trap card. And yeah, it's just, it's just no good. But being able to add quick draw synchron and then, you know, being able to combo with it is still always a really solid play. And that's it for the spells and then for the traps we're just playing the one trap does shoot and as i stated before since there's only one trap you have tons of other options you can do too you can just cut traps all together play like another mystical space typhoon you can play treacherous trap hole you can just do so many things with it because this deck is so malleable and that you can change so many different things and still achieve a like a winning result and with that that's the main deck 40 cards as always and now we can finally go on to the extra deck so we're going to kick off the extra deck with the first one being number 17 leviathan dragon probably the least important card in the extra deck if i'm being honest but it's still just nice to have the option if you open up tour guide and especially like later on or even early in the game if you just need a big beat stick uh this will do the job then you have levier the sea dragon another fantastic rank three card because it gets you all your banished cards or even your opponent's banished monsters that are level four or lower so uh yeah and you're, you're pretty much going to be constantly banishing something important whether it's yourself because of like summoning BLS or your opponent deprisoning you or kaising you, you know, things of that nature. And then everything else is just a bunch of really good synchro monsters. So we have the Formula Synchron, you have the Armory Arm, the Ally of Justice Cataster, uh, TG Hyper Librarian, really strong in this deck, especially if you're able to like, you know, actually get your synchro plays going because, uh, yeah, drawing free cards in addition to like the Mystic Piper is just really good. And then something you don't see very often is one Junk Warrior. Uh, so there are a lot of times, you know, where you would just have Quick Draw and Level Leader with nothing else. So I just like being able to, you know, actually Synchro Summon into something like Junk Warrior, which is just a 2300 body <laughs> at that point, because to try and get your engine going, because you're not always going to be able to have access to a Drill Warrior. So, you know, you might as well get some use out of it. And then speaking of Drill Warrior, we're going to be playing two Drill Warrior, Another fantastic card. Your pretty much your entire deck tends to revolve around Drill Warrior, just banishing itself and then adding 
important monsters that you've added or important monsters that you used from your engrave to your hand especially if like uh you're pretty much uh trying to gain more resources just being able to go quick draw into drill drill banish bring back drill warrior add piper then piper normal summon draw another card and if it's a level one you draw again then you just keep repeating the process until you have enough to beat your opponent is <laughs> it's just really cool and then you're also playing the one orient dragon you know staples brionic dragon of the ice barrier uh, black rose dragon stardust dragon scrap dragon uh, and let me talk about scrap dragon for a bit because since we're playing level leader scrap dragon is like surprisingly really strong because level leader is pretty much just free fodder for scrap dragon to continue destroying up right so you go level leader reduce scrap dragon by one destroy level leader and another card and then you just keep repeating the process until you know eventually scrap dragon becomes level four and then by that point you've pretty much already won the game you, you typically win the game before that if i'm being honest but you know just those little cute cool interactions go a long way helping you win the game and then lastly one trisha led dragon of the ice barrier because trish is cool and yeah it's just a really powerful card if it comes down like i've always said if it comes down uh chances are that you're winning that game straight up and with that that's the deck profile i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please feel free to like comment subscribe and i'll catch you guys next time see ya